Stand By Me um, was the first movie that I did where I realized that I have a chance at actually being successful at what I like to do. It was the first time it was, I did a movie that really reflected my personality, that was different from anything my father would have done. And to be honest with you, when I first read the script, it was developed by a friend of mine, Andy Scheinman and Martin Schaefer, who I've since you know, been long-term friends with and long, we started Castle Rock together. Um, they asked me to read it just to read it, you know, not to direct it, but to see if there's, you know, they said there's some good writing here, but we don't really know what the focus, we don't, you know, can you tell us what this is about? At the time, Adrian Lyne was supposed to direct it, who, you know, directed The Fatal Attraction. And he had just done a movie called Nine and a Half Weeks, and he didn't want to go to work right away. And um, so I read it, and I said, boy, there's some great writing in this, great characters. Um, I don't really know what it's about yet. But boy, I'd like to do something like this because it, it's the, the, the tone of it and the sensibility was very close to my personality and the way I saw the world. So I said, let me do this. And, and when I took it, and they said, okay, you think you're going to, and when I took it on, I, I get migraine headaches because I really didn't know what it was about. I mean, the character of Gordy was kind of an observer. He wasn't really involved in the story so much. And when I hit, when I hit on the fact that he was going to be the main character and it was about him, and this journey to see the body was uh, was something he had to do in order to come to grips with um, his relationship to his father and how his friends helped him see him through that difficult time because he felt his father didn't love him um, and his father liked the brother better and all that. And I thought, okay, now I can see what this film is. And those are feelings I had, you know, and, and the, 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 uh, the strength that you get from friends and how... Friends can make you feel good, you know, help you f make you feel good about yourself. And um, the scene where Gordy, you know, where Chris says to Gordy, says, you know, your father loves you. He just doesn't understand you. And I felt at the time, early on, that that was similar to the way it was with my father, that he did love me, but he didn't quite understand me. And so this film was like, even though a rite of passage for those characters in the movie, it was like a rite of passage for me because it was the first time I was making a film that was connected to my sensibility. And I was scared because I thought if, the, if people don't like this film, then I don't know what I do. Because up until that point, even Spinal Tap was a satire. My father had done satire. He had done show of shows. Those were satires. They did satires of movies even. You know, so that was something I was trading in an area that my father had done. Sure Thing was a romantic comedy. My father had made romantic comedies with Doris Day and with James Garner and Dick Van Dyke. And so I was still in it, you know, trading in, a, in, an, on an, in an area that he, that he was in. But when I did this, this was something that my father never would have tried, never would have done, and this one really reflected me. So I said, if people like this, then they're going to like what I have to offer. And they did. I was lucky. They did, and it was a tremendous affirmation for me. Well, that was the greatest thrill for me of all because Stephen King, um, we showed the film to him privately in a screening and this I knew was his life. You know, he had written this about his own experiences and in, and in his life all three of his friends that he was hung out as a kid 12 years old died. Not just Chris, but all three of his friends had died. I felt that it was too much to say that all three people, so I had the one character dying. And he watched, we watched the film, and when it was over, um, he said, oh, let me just uh, go away. I, I have to go and think for a bit. And I thought, oh God, I hope he likes it. And I didn't know what he was gonna think of it. And then he came back about 15 minutes later, and he said, I just wanna tell you, he said, this is the best movie that's ever been made out of any of my works. He said, not that that's saying much, because a lot of them weren't particularly good. And he says, but he said, you really captured everything that I wanted to do. And, he, and what was interesting is, in his short story, uh, when there's a face-off with the older boys and the younger boys at the body, um, Chris is the one that picks up the gun and, and stands off the older boys. And Andy Scheinman, my partner, said, you know, since this has now become a story, because Gordy was only an observer, since now this has become a story about Gordy's becoming 
uh, a person feeling good about himself, let's have Gordy pick up the gun and, and stand down the, the older boys. And that will be his, you know, coming of age and, you know, becoming a man and all that. And um, I said, great, great, that's what we're going to do. And when Stephen King saw it, he said, you know, sometimes you write things and then you see this. And I looked at that and I said, why didn't I think of that? He said, that's exactly what it should have been. But you had Gordy do that. And I love that you did that. And that made me feel great because he was even saying that we had gone beyond his work and had made it even, even better. So that made me feel great. And then from then on, we had a very special relationship with, uh, with Stephen King. Um, you know, I went on to direct Misery, and we've done, I think, six or seven move Stephen King movies. We did the Dolores Claiborne, and My Heart's in Atlantis, and uh, The Green Mile, and uh, Needful Things. And, and he always says, you know, Castle Rock will have a first shot at whatever it is he wants to do. And he gives it for, for a dollar. When, when we did Misery, when he, that was a, the most important book that he had written, novel, because it was reflecting, again, him as a writer and his fear about uh, the, the fans not liking him from wanting to do something other than, you know, the kinds of things that he had done. Uh, he said, I will only let you do this, because he had not sold the book. It was in hardcover and nobody had bought it. He said, I'll only let you do this book if Rob will either produce or direct it. He wanted to make sure that I would be involved in it. So I agreed to, to do that, and um, that's how we got to get, to get misery made.